Welcome to the Thrive Show. I am so excited to have you on the Thrive Live conversation show with me here, Sharice. I have not seen you in so long, but you haven't aged even for a day. Like you look just as amazing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to even go like, you look better than amazing. And you don't even look like you've aged a day. And we've known each other for at least 15 years, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Crazy but you look amazing. So tell me, I'm excited to have you because I know our topic today is about women in finance and women not really like supporting themselves. There's a variety of things we can talk about that in, with this, but as business owners, as women and in, in business, and you and I have known each other around being in business for all these years, but the topic of what, why women don't um, financially plan or why they don't take the responsibility for themselves, there's so much support around it, but I know you're going to get into that with me. Um, but before we dive right into that, let's dive right into who you are. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about your business and what you've been doing these days. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me on. I love it. Um, I love uh, the name? internet that we could actually do this. Like I know, how right? cool <laughs> is that? That I mean, all those years that, that our paths like were together and then we, you know, changed and changed directions and, and that we could even just thank Facebook because I saw that you were doing something amazing in your business and I reached out to you. So this is the coolest part about that. It absolutely is. Thank you so much. So yeah. um, I'll repeat my name in case people are just joining. My name is Cherie Spann. My company name is She Wealth, which stands for Savvy, Healthy, and Empowered. Savvy, Sexy, Healthy, and Empowered. And how I came up with that is, is that if you don't have your health in order, nothing else really matters. And I'm a financial advisor and I'm also a cosmetologist and both of those worlds kind of met. And I'm, I'm like, you know what? Women kind of really need to design their lives, you know? And there's a lot of missing components that we don't talk about, things that are taboo, things that we don't want to share. And they end up being a detriment to us because we don't have the information or the knowledge that we need to be able to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came up with my passion, she wealth. I love that. I love it. And you have a story of your own about she wealth. Will you share like what made you really passionate to take the, the financial side to really get it out to the women? So a series of things happened in my life. I, uh, for the past 20, five years, I battled with endometriosis. And um, it was very, very severe. In addition to being in a, a long term marriage that didn't work out. Um, with being sick, you know, I exhausted all the money that I had saved, you know, my 401ks, my IRAs, like everything was gone. And I would just lay there and just say, you know what, what if I didn't have, have this money? The specialist did not accept insurance. So I would be suffering in pain, you know, and no one would want to see me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was the first thing. And the second thing was, is I said, people can end up, you know, losing their homes, losing a lot of things because they're sick. And after my research and stuff, and 80% of bank or all bankruptcies are from people that have medical debt. You know, not that they have credit cards charged up, it's just because they lost their job, because they got sick and they were behind. And um, I said, I, I need to do something a little bit more to help people understand that they have to protect themselves, mm. you know, that, and their families, because we're very, very vulnerable, especially as entrepreneurs. You know, if you don't have your legs or your arms, or if you're not able to speak or get up, then you can't create your content, you can't create or manifest that gift that you have. And so that cuts into your income. And if right. you're depending on that income, where's the money going to come from? Your savings, your retirement, family, credit cards. And once that's exhausted, you have devastation. So that was the first part of it. 
And that led me to create a group on Facebook called She By Design, which stood for Savvy, Sexy, Healthy, and Empowered. Because if you don't have your health, I don't care how much money you have, it's not going to matter. Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Because you can't even think forward to think about like, what are you going to do? You can't enjoy your money. Let me tell you, I was in so much pain, like tr just trying to think about a dime was making my eyelashes hurt. Like I was like, mm. I can't think about anything except for getting better, you know? And once that group was established, it was, it was a safe place for women to meet and share collectively. And um, fast forward a little bit, I went full time into my financial services business. And with that, I was learning things by the book. I really wasn't learning 100% through experience. Well, I got a, a monkey wrench thrown into my perfect little plans that I had made for my life. <laughs> Don't we and all? I know, right? <laughs> Damn those plans. <laughs> we, I separated uh, from, from, from my now ex-husband and I was like, I should know better. You know, like this is the stuff that I teach, but because of trust and things that you did, wouldn't think that would ever happen to you, you just don't bother to address them, dot those I's and cross those T's. And right, because it's conflict, which women yeah. don't like to, you know, have those conflicting conversations or crucial conversations for that matter, right? That'll never happen to me, you know, we're good and this and that. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I call it, I, I call divorce virtual widowship, a virtual oh. widow, okay. because what happens is widows, you know, people kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, her husband passed away and it's so sad. How can we support you and stuff like that? But when a woman gets divorced, it's kind of like back in the day, it was kind of like this thing that was shunned. Right. You know, like, oh, she's a, you know, she's. What did she do wrong? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's the one that's getting divorced. Like he left her or whatever. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with that anymore. <laughs> nothing to do with that. But how do we protect ourselves and especially for us who have started businesses who are in business and now you're going through this traumatic experience whether it's your health whether it's a relationship change whether it's you have to take care of ailing parents you know or ailing child how do you transition yourself and what happens to you in that process because emotionally you're not there anymore so I had to, I had to like, I had to completely check out for a while because I had a, a complete emotional meltdown and I wasn't able to interact with people. So that caused me to be quiet a lot. And in that I said, you know what, I'm going to take She By Design and create that into my business because that's my passion. Like that's my life. Like it's everything that I've went through to help women understand that they're not alone. And so many are going through so many different things and so many different phases. And some people are going through a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. Right. And I call that the sandwich generation. You know, it's like you in the middle and then you got your parents on the top and then you got your kids on the bottom. And you're in the middle in, of the sandwich and you're wondering how am I going to navigate through all of this with this weight pressing me from the bottom and pressing me from the top. So that's how She Wealth was born. Mm. So let me get this clear. So you're living your life, you're, you're, you know, dabbling in a few different things and in the financial world, you're working for someone when you said buy the book. So you're following their regimen and their routine and their policies and procedures. And then of what you're teaching other women, right? Other women like to ensure themselves that they're going to have financial wealth. And then the carpet gets pulled out from underneath you and you're, you're facing a, a divorce and your financial security of being married, like now just changes completely. Completely gone. So, like 
And the crazy thing about it was, was we had a conversation and, you know, it was an agreement that he would take care of me for a year. So I don't want anything from you. I just want to be taken care of for a year so that I can get my business running and I'll be good. Okay. That's a great well, two weeks later, the whole plan changed and the account had nothing in it. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I still had bills. I still had, I had rented this townhouse, you know, like, it's like, what do I do now? I'm in a new city. I don't know anybody, one friend. I don't really have a job. My, my business is in another state. Like, this is... So everything just came crumbling and just like crashing down. Wow. So what do you do then? Like you're, and you're vulnerable, right? Right. Because you've been teaching financial savviness and now you're like, wait, I'm my best (laughs) client. (laughs) Hello. Like, I'm like, how dare you like try to talk to people about their money and you don't have any now, like what's going on with you? And so I ended up with a a business coach, a therapist, and a grief counselor, three, all three of them once a week. Wow. And I'll never forget what the coach said. She told me, she's like, you are not, you are what you went through, but you're not what you went through. Right. That does not define you. Doesn't define you. You know, you have to go through this experience so that you can be able to empathize with other people and other women as they're navigating through this. And I, and I said, you know what, this is absolutely right. But man, it hurts to get your heart ripped out from your chest. Oh my God. It's so painful, right? (laughs) Yes. But again, like what better of a person to learn from when that person is walking in the same shoes or similar shoes on that same path. So it, it sounds like to me, you know, you can speak to the, the mass of women, yes. but you have this market of women who may also be in that vulnerable state of not having the, the comfort left within their, in their uh, foundation. So that healthy relationship, or, you know, if somebody is thinking, oh my gosh, I'd like to get a divorce, but I am afraid to, because I'm attached to the bank account. And what do I do without that money? Right. And it's real. Like, you, you know, and it doesn't make them like what they call a gold digger or anything like that. It's like, I need to eat. You know, and, and if you have children, like my children need to eat and they need clothes and they need shoes. And maybe I've been out of the nine to five market for 10 years. Like, I don't even know where to start to put in a, a <laughs> resume, you know, and, and, and go to work. Like, it just doesn't fit. Yeah. And it's terrifying. Wow. So what ends up, what ended up happening? So you got real with yourself, like you needed to heal. And I think that that's, again, going back to your health aspect of your program, it not just because you were not well, but now you have a broken heart and you need to heal. And there's so many women that I can just imagine that are listening to this and saying, I'm broken every day because I'm living in a relationship that I feel stuck in that I have to stay in because I'm attached to that bank account. And that's my financial security. And where else would I go? Or what else would I do with my life? And so they're prisoners in their own mind. And I think what you're touching base on is that it's so imperative in order to build financial wealth, you have to literally build your health and wellness from within, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you had a, co- a life coach, a grief coach, and a therapist. Ther- yeah. And where did you go from there? Like, what was the, what was the turning point that said, okay, She Wealth by Design is like the thing that you're going to just put out there because you're going to, your story is your story and you have to like, you have to do this. So now what? So I was at a point where I am like, I'm getting ready to stink or swim. Mm -hmm. And what better way to 
than to use my pain, you know, and turn that into something positive where I can help. I said, well, if this is happening to me and I know all of these different things, what about people who do, still don't know the information and they're stuck, stuck maybe because their health is not good, you know, stuck because they have stuck financially stuck, maybe because of their self-esteem. It could be a combination of all three, who knows? But there needs to be an example. There needs to be a voice. There needs to be someone saying, here I am, you know, this is what I did and this is how I did it. You know, I have no shame anymore saying that I went from, you know, having X amount of dollars to on the bread line asking for help to pay my utilities, you know, so my lights would stay on, you know, and going to get food so that I could eat. And even in that, I was still able to eat healthy and made healthy choices so that my body felt good because of my autoimmune um, disorders as well. So it, it, it was a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. And when I laid on that couch, as I, and I had no furniture in my house, let me mind you, because I had put everything in storage. So the only thing I had was my sofa and this wine rack, here, which didn't have any wine in it. <laughs> which is a really important thing, but it needs to have the wine in it. So you <laughs> The wine, it had, it had no wine. So I was just like, it's a nice piece. And it's, it stayed with me. So this will be with me for the rest of my life. Oh. But laying there... You know, I said, I need to, I need to become somebody and do something meaningful. You know, I have all this experience, all these tools, like all these things, how can I bring them together? And that's how She Wealth was born. Yeah. And people see the name and they automatically think about money. And it's, it, it's not about, it's not about that. It's a, it's a whole lifestyle. It's a mentality. It's the way you think. And like you said, I had to heal from the inside out, you know, and like right now I'm in, in, in the middle of a 90 day challenge. I'm on day 68 right now. So it'll end December 30th. And I challenged myself to walk at least 45 minutes, 45 to 60 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Rain, cold. It, I don't care what time I get home. It, like it has to be done. So in the morning by 10 o'clock, cause I have an office, but I work mostly from home. So by 10 o'clock, it's like, all right, the dog's got to go out. We're going to do our walk. So while I'm walking, I'm listening to my motivation. I'm listening to my Les Brown, my Mel Robbins and all of that type of stuff. And I'm getting fresh air and I'm out in nature, you know, becoming one. And before that I have my quiet time. So then between those two, you get your downloads of what you need to do what your next steps were okay. and are, are supposed to be, excuse me. And day 32, I went to the doctor and I had lost 11 pounds. Now I wasn't really even trying to lose weight. I know I needed to, but it wasn't like, I got to get on a scale, see how much weight I lost. No, cause I don't even have a scale. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the By thought. design, <laughs> yes, <laughs> by design, I don't have a scale. So, um, just being out and be, and move, and having that movement, I, I lost 11 pounds. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much weight I've lost in the next 30 days. And I'm not even really concerned. It's just the goal of yeah. putting something out there and sticking to it. So no dairy, you know, wa walking and a very little amount of sugar, not a lot. Just and enough to live off of. <laughs> just enough to live off of, right? We, we still need some carbs. And, you know, my life has already changed in that time. And I, I've i evolved in the past three years, you know, since my transition. I'm not that same person. Like, even my pictures, I look completely different. You like do. My skin is different, right? Yeah. Like everything is just different. And they're like, you're like aging in reverse. I said, I was in a toxic environment, toxic relationship, you know, and I was trying to trick myself into believing that it was going to work, you know, like I could do this and now sometimes you just got to say for my own peace of mind and sanity. And if I'm going to live, I got to let it go. 
and that's what I did. And so, so important. And I love that you're, you're saying that because I know, you know, it's those, what I call the bathroom floor moments. And um, you and I have known each other a long time, but when I was breaking free from that business model that I thought was my life, Um, I felt the same. I had that bathroom floor moment of what am I going to do? Because what I'm doing, I'm not, I I felt like it was a divorce leaving that company. I was not happy with it. I didn't feel my best self. And my self-talk was like, what I'll say is shit talk, you know, like (laughs) times 10. And I can remember even thinking, if I'm feeling this deflated and this defeated and this self-sabotage is taking over my beautiful life, I know this stuff, but what about the people who don't know this stuff? Mm -hmm. And that was when I then became that holistic life coach to say all the things that I knew and I had had in my plethora of tools, I wasn't able to use until I had to heal from that breakup of that. And my breakup was that business that Mm -hmm. I identified with, that people identified with me with. And, you know, I was at the top of the company and, and and that's what my, what, who I was, but I didn't love it anymore. I didn't love what I, what was who I was becoming with that. And so I can resonate only in that scenario. I know a business divorce and a relationship divorce are totally different, but having a loss is a loss, right? It's a grievance and that you have to like rebuild from there and realize who you are now with all this new knowledge and all this new wisdom and learn how you're going to come out of it much stronger and healthier and better. But knowing the wisdom you had before and now you're going to add it to the wisdom of this pain. And I always say there's pain in the, per- there's purpose in the pain, right? Yeah, we might right. not love it, but you and I both have birthed babies and there is nothing fun about birthing, right? They not- <laughs> <laughs> and- <laughs> can make it look cute all they want. Like I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but there's a purpose with the pain. Right. And you get this bundle of beautiful baby joy after it, but yes. it takes time to appreciate that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's where it sounds like you are right now of like now reaping the rewards of the pain and now embracing what you went through and helping um, other women see that sometimes it doesn't always look pretty but how do you, and where do you go from here? Like how do, what's your next steps in helping that woman from, well, now she's healthy. How does she, how does she prosper? How does she blossom? So that's a perfect question. And I actually had this conversation with um, someone last night, you know, she was telling me that, um, that get up and go in the morning is not there. And uh, I said, and I stopped her and I said, I'm going to tell you why before you tell me, because you're not working and you haven't found your genius. So you're not working in your genius. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh my gosh, (laughs) (laughs) You're you're so right. I said, yeah, because every morning I get up early, my, I'll wake up like at 630, but I'm up at 7.30, like my eyes open and it's like ready to go at 7.30, no alarm clock because my body is like, all right, like who, who do you have to reach today? You know, what post are you going to put up that's going to touch somebody's heart? And for a long time, I would post and not knowing if I was affecting anyone. And then randomly, I started getting inbox messages here and there. They're like, I never say anything on your post, but I always look for your page every single day for inspiration. Mm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, male and female. Wow. And so uh, to this lady last night, and I, I told her, I said, you're not inspired. What you're doing is not fulfilling. 
-hmm. You need to, I said, you, what is it that makes you tick? And she told me, and I said, so do it. What are you waiting for? You don't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. And life is so short. So, 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 so short. Right. And to live like, a miserable life. It's a really long, like, it's really long. If you yeah. want to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> so you might as well do something that you love because it, it will just make that life that much more beautiful. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so it, 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 was, it, it was interesting. It was an interesting conversation. And at the end, she was like, you know, I really needed this. Thank you so much. I'm like, you're welcome. And I told her, I said, I don't even know how I end up. And it, the crazy thing is I taught two weeks ago a business class for a, a, a college. And then another college picked me up to teach three classes. And I said to her, I don't know how the hell I ended up teaching college classes on business. Like, <laughs> it's like just the weirdest thing, but you know what, who better than the person who's had 10 businesses to, t you know, go through all the pitfalls with you and the things that you need to do and how you're going to feel and the stuff that nobody really wants to talk about. Right. Right. You know, and like you said, you broke up with your business. It's the same thing. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship that you knew loved and trusted and for whatever reason the love was not there anymore and you had to separate yourself and you and when you separate you're separating from people you know that you became friends with or family or you know you did things with and stuff like that so it's a whole new lifestyle that you have to start over with so whether it's a business relationship a personal relationship um um a physical relationship, you know, it's still a relationship right. and the, the different components are still there. So, yeah, yeah, it's so true. And it is so powerful. And I think we eventually talk ourselves into what we're deserving of, right? If we're not in healthy relationships, if we're not feeling that, that, that well health, we don't feel the wealth. We don't feel the abundance. And I think to your point, when you start to feel the abundance of you feeling good within your body, you start to manifest and you start to attract things into your life, like opportunities that can help you build wealth. Right. So speak to that a little bit on, on building wealth. Speak to the woman who is like, I'm going to just live my life and hope like things just manifest or things just grow. But tell, talk to the wealth side of your, of your um, she by design. So what scares me um, or I should say what scared me, scared me about myself, or what scares me about what I see others doing is this live for today type mentality mm -hmm. and not taking the small steps or the education that they need to be able to be okay, you know, okay for now to be, to be able to build to get to an end goal because there's going to be a point in all of our lives where we're not going to be able to work anymore or don't want to work anymore. And for me, I want it to be, I don't want to work anymore. You know, I just want to enjoy. I'm not doing this because I have to, I'm doing it because I want to. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge, that's a huge difference. But a lot of us are living for the moment. So they're like, oh, you know, I want to travel here and I'm buying this and I'm buying that. And I'm like, if you get sick, what happens to your life? Mm -hmm. What happens to your money? Have you accumulated? And if COVID hasn't taught anybody anything, you know, <laughs> emergency fund, like, do you know what that is? <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's more than what it just says like we don't even need six months anymore it's like two years of emergency fund just in case because we don't know what we're you know we're walking into in this next few years Truth. you know what if you know god forbid 
if you're married and your husband passes away, do you know the details about the finances of the home? There's a lot of women who have not a clue. He takes care of everything, which is beautiful. But guess what? You don't know what the mortgage is. You don't know what the bills are. You don't know what account he has. You don't know anything. So now he's gone and you're left. And it's like, I don't even really, I've never really balanced the checkbook. You always took care of everything. And it's like, now you're starting over. That's scary too. Right. Totally. And does he have the proper protection in place? Can you still live in your home and still drive the same cars? And can your children still go to the same schools? Can all of these things happen if you're not taken care of properly? No. So all of that sounds super, like we get it. I, I mean, we, I get it. I hear it. I hear it all the time. I was, as a matter of fact, spoke to one of the Magnificent Mamas members the other day and she was saying, Elizabeth, you know, I thought I was financially secure. I have been saving so much money because she has three children, two of which are twenties and they're turning 17 and they need cars. She goes, not only do they need cars, they're going to need to go to college soon. Right. So like, Yes, I've been saving money and she has, her business is super successful. So, but then she throws a divorce in it, right? So in the midst of like these kids turning 16, 17, 18, now a whole divorce happens. And again, she's like, forget about retirement. It's the kids stuff and in our like the older generation of like when I was well it's too bad that's on you you guys are gonna have to figure out how to go to college or have to go to get buy your own car whatever but we haven't lived in that generation a long time and that's where parents are saying feelings you know the the need and the desire to support our children or set our children up with a successful platform so now she can't So, but the time is ticking. So how do you like all of the, you could just throw it all up in the air and say, forget it. I'm just going to (laughs) buy, die broke. I don't know. Like like, forget it. Like (laughs) some, someone will come and take care of me. But, but that is a really bad, bad bit of advice, right? Like I couldn't. Terrible financial plan. Terrible. (laughs) So what do you tell that woman? What do you say to her? she needs to figure out what she wants because what happens is we get mixed up in the life right you got the kids and you get get out of college get married kids this and that blah, 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 blah. and we forget who we are so maybe we're working a job or maybe we're a stay-at-home mom or maybe we have a business and we've saved a little bit but we still haven't gone full-fledged into what our mission and our passion is. And then this monkey wrench gets thrown on and the fire gets turned up and you're in this whirlwind of stuff, right? And it's like, what do I do? The first thing you have to do when you're on an airplane, they tell you is to put the oxygen mask on yourself, not on anybody else. So when that time came for me, I love my daughter, but guess what? I had to save myself. Mm -hmm. And that meant that I had to move, pack up, change everything that I knew and dig deep and get going. Like there was no, like there's no room for distractions. There's no room for people. And like, there's no room for that. Right. No drama. There's no drama, none, none. And if people come to you with it and I, and I, I had to put my friends on alert and tell them, I, I can't deal with any drama and I'm not going to. So you have no, you, especially when you're in that healing process, you have no space for any additional, right? Yeah, just yeah. enough. It feels like it's just about to explode already. Like, and then you get, you're like, ah. So my door's like, my yawn sensory overload. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, because I need to create, like I, I need, f- 
flow. I need income. I need chi. Like I need all of it to uh, with to come in without blo- without it without any blockages, right. so that I can help you guys. Once I'm, and I I don't like the word stable because stable means that you're not, not growing. Mm-hmm. So once I am in my element, I can then give freely and then be able to help because. Let's face it, kids are not out of your pockets until they're at least 30. And that's a statistic. Oh, wow. Really? 30. Yeah. 30. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I was, my daughter was, uh, I think she was 20. I said to I, at one of the women's groups, I said, How come I've been friends with you guys for a while? Nobody told me that the problems just get big. Oh, they're like, Oh, yeah. They just bigger. get bigger. They don't bigger. stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, I need a new car. Oh, okay. I need this. I'm short with my rent. Oh, really? You know, so it's like, it just gets bigger. Before they used to skin their knee or something like that. But now it's a whole different ballgame. But I digress. We got to, we have to figure out what it is that we want out of our life when we get to that point. And sometimes you don't know and it's okay. Mm-hmm. But reach out for help and dig deep so that you can start on that path. And then once you start on that path, the universe just brings everything to you. Mm. Everything just comes that you need it. But if you're in that drama mode, the victim mode, the complaining mode, you're going to miss it because it could be as simple as one person invite you to be at a place. And I, and I, there were many days like, I feel like sugar, honey, iced tea. I don't want to go anywhere. My nerves are shot, you know, but now with, uh, and then I had to reframe that and say, okay, who am I supposed to meet when I get there? Mm -hmm. That one connection, that one person that I talk to, you know, might be a speaking engagement, might be your next big client. Like you just don't know. Right. So I went looking for that one person that I had to exchange information with. And that's what I did. And once I met them, I would leave. That's awesome. So be open, be open to one. I, I'm hearing you say, like, l- seek your your greater desire of what it is. So if you need, um, and I just want to bring dollars and cents sometimes, because I think mm-hmm. when we think about, okay, if I have twins and they need cars, so I will budget like X XM- First, you said, take care of yourself. Yes. Right. Okay, so my financial future needs X amount of dollars that I need to put that into every month. And then if I have extra, break it down and put it into that bucket of, okay, the twins need a car. Well, maybe I could get away with one them sharing one, right? <laughs> they don't need, just because I had two doesn't mean that we need two cars because they're going to go on to college anyway and they're going to build their own wisdom and create their own wealth because I've taught them to do that. But college, okay. So, you know, and I think, is it, is it wise to come up with a dollar amount of where you're going? So then you have a target of what you need. That's wise. And, And for college, people always get frantic, but I tell them they created student loans for a reason. And if you don't want your child to have the student loan debt and you take it out in your name, that's fine too. Because guess what? You don't pay it until they graduate. So you you have plenty of time to figure out what you're doing in the interim. Do not take money out of your 401k, 403b, 457, your retirement plan to pay for your children's college. That's a no-no. Really? Because you've, you've compounded your interest over the years so that you can build and get to a certain point you don't take a lump sum out to pay for your children's college that is a no that's a no like there's no exceptions to the rule when it comes to that at all student loan if you want to take that out in your name so that they don't have any debt if if that's what you want to do then that's what you do and then when they graduate four six eight years or however long they're going then that's when you pay the, the money starts to get paid back. But in that four year time period, you have room to decide whether you're starting another business, you know, whether you'll have access to more funds, 
you know, whether you have whatever it is, it gives you time to strategize mm -hmm. instead of thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be an empty nester. My kids are going to college. How am I going to pay for this? Da, 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 da. Student loan for college. Then they need to figure out how much the, well, we need as women to figure out how much we need to be able to survive off of in the future. So if you're building a business, well, my business is going to bring me in X amount of dollars of residual income, or I can create this amount per month and then live off of this amount. And I used to hate the word budget. So I, I changed it to lifestyle spending plan. <laughs> oh, I like that. What's your lifestyle spending plan? You know, so I know I need X amount of dollars every single month to pay HOA taxes, you know, uh, car payment or whatever it is. And, and then that's the number. And then I don't buy anything extra unless I meet my goal. So I have a goal to do X, Y, and Z. Oh, I want a new pocketbook. Okay. Well, once you reach this goal, then you buy the pocketbook. Whereas before I would be like, oh, I want a new pocketbook do, 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 and order the bag. <laughs> right. 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 So it's like, no, no more. We're not ordering the bag anymore. We're securing the bag. We're securing the bag so that when you have it, you're not stressed out about how you're going to pay for it or the credit card bill is going to come or you took it from where the money didn't belong and all that, like none of that. Eliminate all the stress that you can. So the lifestyle spending plan, and that's, those are your fixed expenses. So that's pretty easy. And most people know what that is every single month, but it's like, oh, we went out to eat, swipe. I went to do this, swipe. And then you look at your bill at the end of the month and you're like, oh my gosh, I spent a thousand dollars like on nothing. <laughs> like right. things that you, know. you eat and wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not an investment. No. Not quite. So, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. So if you think about that thousand dollars compounded every month, that's 12 grand a year, what that's worth in future dollars, you stop doing that very, very quickly. Right. So the person who's like, oh, well, I'm living for today and I want it for today and I want the instant gratification, they're actually shooting themselves in the foot for their future because then they might want it today, but when they want to live the financially free retirement, and that retirement doesn't mean that you have to be 62 when you retire anymore. You could retire whenever you'd like if you have that financial plan set up. Right. Um, to be able to do more things and have that flexibility. So it sounds like that you, you're just being smarter by taking care of yourself by, by choosing and selecting what, where you want to spend your money and what you would prefer yeah. to take that money and invest it. So as a woman, in, uh, okay, maybe I want two per bags or oh, the one that I've had for five years, it's still perfectly fine. Instead, like, like take that thought process and say, okay, I'm going to invest this. Do you have like, I know as a planner, you can't necessarily tell me like your favorite things to invest in, but what is that? What, is there a secret sauce? Is there something like, how do I go and invest? And can I invest sometimes or do I have to have a discipline to say monthly, I'm going to invest? So that depends on each individual person. So for example, if you're an entrepreneur and you know that your company has been up for up and running for a few years, right? And you say, well, if I invest in my company, right? Like maybe you go to the next tier of marketing for the next 90 days. And you know that that next tier will result you in X amount of dollars in the next 30 to 120 days, let's just say. Now you have, so it, it's kind of like, it's more like strategies depending on where you are in your life and how old you are. Now you have more money and 
that would be better served to you a, as opposed to putting it someplace. Mm -hmm. Let's just say for a long term. And I'm not saying not to do that. But what I'm saying is depending on who you are and where you are in your life, there might be things that you need to do. And that's why having a financial advisor is important because we're like sounding boards for people. Mm -hmm. So what does your portfolio look like? Real estate, you know, you have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you know, what do you have 401k? Do you have systematic uh, contributions going in every single month, every year, quarterly, semi-annually? So like, what are you doing? And then what are your goals for your business? How can we increase that without put, you know, putting in a whole bunch of money at one time? So there's a few different ways to look at that. And each individual person is unique and their plans are customized to fit and to suit, to suit them. So I, it sounds like as a woman, as a business woman or a woman who is married or a stay at home mom should actually meet with a financial planner just to figure out how to secure her future in all cases. So a financial planner could also help a business owner build wealth, not just grow her business, but also build the wealth for the future. Build the wealth for the future. Because as a business owner, you there's certain um, vehicles that are designed specifically for people like us that, that are in business that can help our tax liability at the end of the year, you know? So, and then... Um, a lot of times, maybe either our spouse or counterpart are in business, or they might work a ten, uh, excuse me, a W two job. How do we offset that? You know, so that's a conversation that goes between the financial advisor and the accountant. You know, mm -hmm. and what would be the best thing for both of you as as a couple? Um, so there's so many different moving parts and there is no possible way that anybody could try to even begin to figure it out by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is it gets confusing even for the financial advisor to, yes. until you're looking at it holistically, right. um, you have to take it all and put it into perspective of what are the goals and where are the people right now in, in their financial life? Exactly. Makes sense. So why do you feel like as we wrap up our conversation, cause you've given us so much, I think, and, and just in reflection of our conversation, like really taking care of our health and wellness correlates to making sure that we have the wealth there, if God forbid we need it, but also that there is that insurance, uh, not insurance, but assurance that you are going to be taken care of. So as a woman, if we're parlaying that responsibility to our spouse, or even as a female partner, having a female partner, two people in partnership need to have these healthy conversations, even though they may not be comfortable, right? In order to have this awareness of where and who is going to be taken care of and how it's all going to roll out. Then taking it into the, res the respect of a woman-owned business. So looking at that and knowing that we need to take responsibility and also step into our, what I call our power to be strong and be financially savvy so we can grow a larger business and having that um, reflection or having that projection I think I, I should use the word projection of what that looks like so I can have a goal and a desire to grow and expand that business right absolutely absolutely awesome. So now, okay, I was going to ask you a question. I have to remember the question, what it was, but it it's now, so when a woman says, well, I want, can, I have my partner, but I have my business and I need just to talk to you re, just in reflection on my business, not maybe a woman's in a, in a relationship that she's not comfortable with. Right. Can she still have a financial planner without bringing Absolutely. her her partner in absolutely okay and that will 
conflict on taxes or things like that that or will that that's more accounting stuff that needs to be discussed that there yeah yeah that's more accounting stuff but with the business i, I want to add and this is something that i didn't mention a business mm -hmm. succession plan is very very important and we don't talk about that enough um what happened like what, what are your goals for your business do you want to sell it do you want to will it to your children um if you, do you have business partners you know if you have business partners god forbid something happened to one of them going back to the relationship thing it's the same type of structure no matter what type of relationship there is if something happens to your business partner maybe you don't like their partner or spouse well guess what they're your new partner mm -hmm. so do you have the agreement set up, you know, key man insurance, buy sell agreements to be able to buy them out. You know, what does that look like? You know, if something happened to us, what happens to our business? Are our kids going to take it over? Oh, they don't want it. Okay, great. So I just spent all these years building a business that my kids don't want. Well, who, you know, who's my protege? Who's going to take over the business? Like all these different things have to be discussed because there's a lot of moving parts that come that underlie and like we're just like oh i like to make bracelets i'm gonna open i'm gonna start a jewelry business i'm gonna start a company and then the company starts and it blows up and it's like i never thought about all these other things <laughs> mm. wow yeah and so interesting because yeah, there are a lot of things that women don't think about, especially when they have their, their business as their passion and they just know like what they want and what they want to do and what they believe like is their passion. They feel like they don't have time to do that. So right. how important. Okay, so now tell me, do you as a, like, do you, can you work with what states of what, Who's your ideal client? What state? I think we know who your ideal client is, but what states can you work in personally with financial planning? Um, so uh, you mean geographic? Yes. So New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, we, we could basically do any state. I'm licensed in 10 states. Oh, wow. Florida, Texas, Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, Maryland. Colorado, Arizona, uh, New York, New Jersey, PA. I think that was 10. All right. So I'm in Delaware. You, you're not, you're not licensed in Delaware. I'm all the 10, not Delaware. But, but they're all reciprocal. So like if we have clients that, you know, are in another state, we just get the reciprocal license and we're able to help them or refer them to one of our colleagues. Okay. Awesome. So tell us where we can find you. Where do you hang out? You, sh you mentioned that um, when you post, people love to see your posts. Where are you? Where do you love to post your So we're your on wisdom? Facebook and Instagram. Um, our name is She Wealth. So savvy, sexy, healthy, and empowered. www.shewealth.net. www.shewealth.net. You can go on sign up for our, um, I'm going to say mailing list, but our newsletter, we send out blogs and different information um, every every other week so that people can stay abreast and if any events, virtual events that are going on, um, they'll get information on that as well. Awesome. And if somebody wanted to set up time with you, do you do virtual? Uh, I'm assuming since you can't be in 10 states at one time, so you can do a virtual session or consultation with somebody absolutely um, awesome i love I, I love the uniqueness of what your what um direction you're coming with especially as a holistic life coach i love that you're holistically looking at that individual but you're also sharing the vulnerability of being a woman and what we're seeing in today's world where there are women growing businesses faster than they have ever in the in the history of humanity right so women are taking on roles that have they've never had mentors or you know have right. never had mentors to follow in the footsteps of their mothers or their grandmothers. And if they do, they're lucky, but it's still all different. So I think coming together, 
as women, it is so important to share this wisdom. And that's where the Magnificent Mamas Collective comes into play. Because what I love to do is bring with the wisdom of the collective minds, because we all shouldn't know everything. But we right. know that there's a mama or a mama, quote unquote, another woman who knows what you're going through or has an idea or has an experience and she can help guide you and um, support you and or at least find you the person who can give you the answers that you need. We do not need to do this alone. And I think we're doing we've been doing that way too long. Mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is also my mission just to bridge the gap between women trying to do business all by themselves solely and not, you know, have that support. So right. awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much for spending yeah. this time with me, girlfriend. I love seeing you. I love hearing your, your story. I'm sorry. Your story has been painful, but I love that. I see your smile and I can see that you are moving towards greater days. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to all of it. <laughs> yes, that is fantastic.